Right, so translocation is the movement of sucrose through the flowing sieve element from a source to a sink. We start off, right, so the first thing when you're answering a question that you need to talk about. So the flowing sieve elements have gaps at both ends called plasma stomata. The plasma stomata allow the movement of sucrose and minerals from one sieve element to another. Right, the problem is though, flown sieve elements, they're basically hollow cells. They don't have any organelles of their own. So, they need companion cells which provide everything they need. The companion cells contain lots of mitochondria because they require lots of ATP to be formed. Because they're going to be carrying out lots of active transport. So, the ATP is used to provide energy for a hydrogen pump to go and actively pump hydrogen out of our companion cells. So, the hydrogen pump is going to be actively transported out due to lots of ATP being produced by the mitochondria. So this causes concentration gradient. So the concentration gradient of the hydrogen will be higher than the concentration inside. This causes the hydrogen ions to move back into the companion cells through a channel protein. As it moves back through this channel protein, it goes and it carries the sucrose into the companion cells from the surrounding areas. So the concentration of sucrose in the companion cells is increasing. Um, right, we can also call this, because it's moving back in, we can also call this facilitated diffusion, because it's being facilitated by a channel protein. So the sucrose concentration inside the companion cells increases. Because you're increasing the amount of sucrose in there, that's increasing the amount of fuel that's basically there for the mitochondria to carry out respiration. So this enables the mitochondria to go and produce more ATP, so it carries on pumping out more hydrogen ions, which can then go and move back in, and so carrying more sucrose. So the more sucrose you have, in the external area, the more ATP you're producing, so the more sucrose can be transported in. <clears throat> so the sucrose concentration is higher in the companion cells than in the flown sieve elements. So therefore, the sucrose will go and it will move into your flown sieve elements through the plasma stomata. So this increases the concentration of sucrose in our phloem sieve elements. So as the sucrose moves into the sieve elements, this causes the water concentration in the sieve elements to become lower. So therefore, your water concentration now in your phloem sieve element is going to be considerably lower than it will be in the xylem. So water will go and diffuse out of the xylem into your phloem sieve elements because it will move down a concentration gradient. So this large volume of water that moves into it causes hydrostatic pressure this increase in hydrostatic pressure enables the sucrose to be dissolved in the water and because the hydrostatic pressure is always going to push things from an area of high hydrostatic pressure to an area of low hydrostatic pressure, this will start to move the sucrose from this area where it's a source, so where it's being made, down the plant until it gets to a sink, so where it's being stored. So, once 
the hydrostatic pressure decreases at the sink. The sucrose, so the water will go and diffuse out of the flown sieve elements into the sink, so somewhere in a route. That will carry the sucrose with it, and the sucrose will be stored in those sink areas.